I was recently asked by one of a person, uh, brother, can I uh, use the Bible words and sending SMS uh, to my friends and everything because one of the recent pastor who called himself as an anointed person said the thing, only anointed person should use the word of God, others should listen to it. That really forced me to the question of really, again, saying the thing, who is truly anointed? Another set of people came, say, came and said the thing, brother, what will you answer? If somebody comes and tells you, touch not the anointed one, even though they may be living in a kind of a, a filthy, uh, wrong, uh, hypocritic life, saying li lies and stealing money and even abusing every sort of possible power given by God to them. So what will happen? So can anybody correct them or ask question? For these things, I would like to take about three characters from the Bible. Let us say the author of the word, David. David said about the thing, touch not the anointed, saying for the soul. Saying that, touch not the anointed means do not kill him. Do not touch him or take his life out of it. Not to correct him or anything of that sort. If you clearly see that, while Saul was the king, Samuel went and told him that he will be removed from his kingdom. And David was competing or running to replace him to be the Israel's king according to God's promise, according to God's expectation and he was trying to fulfill that. The same David, when he committed a sin, Nathan, a man of God, also risked his own life going and talking to a king about what he has done is absolutely wrong. Maybe let us consider this one. If David said, touch not the anointed, I am anointed by God, who are you to say that to me? Probably, David would have lost his soul. Nathan did a wonderful job by going and correcting and saying the thing because of his one act. Six out of ten commandments being chopped out because of his one act. David had the humbleness to correct himself. Then I would say the thing, anointed people will not claim themselves to be anointed and refusing to correct if one of the fellow brother come and talks to them about their wrongdoings. Here I've been seeing many clippings and many videos, uh, pastors shouting at words saying the thing, who are you to correct me? But I'm certain about the thing, such people are certainly not anointed at all. I think that is my, that, that is the opinion which we would like to consider that. Check with everything, because Jesus said that many will come and deceive you. So it is our duty to check every spirit before even accepting. Every human being can make a mistake. Take for instance, Jesus gave the keys of heaven to Peter. I am sure he is an anointed person. Who came and corrected him? Paul. Paul, had, uh, Paul did not have any good testimony. He came with a baggage of wrongdoings, even the persecuting the churches and everything. When he went with full authority, went to Peter and said, Brother, what you are doing is absolutely wrong. How can you behave like an uh, uh, unbeliever by asking the people to practice circumcision? With all his graciousness, with pure anointing capacity, Peter writes in the second Peter saying the thing, Paul had such a great knowledge and he appreciated him for correcting him. That should be the right spirit of anointing. If anybody is there to correct, I am chapter 9 in Christianity. That should be the right motivation. So, if anybody claims that thing, he is anointed and nobody should touch him, take him, he is a false prophet. Yes, brother, but uh, there is a common question these days uh, uh, when uh, we see the biblical example of uh, uh, Miriam uh, trying to correct Moses. Uh, when uh, Moses marries this Ethiopian lady, Miriam comes and asks Moses and says, uh, uh, are you the only one who uh, uh, God talks to? Uh, why did you marry an Ethiopian lady? And we see when Miriam raised this question against Moses, God was angry with Miriam and Miriam uh, even got leprosy. Uh, so, of course, when we see this particular example, we, we can uh, come to a conclusion that uh, if we talk against God's servants, we would be punished by God. What do you say for this? First of all, uh, let me uh, correct your first point. Okay, God never punish like these kind of a silly guys claiming to be there. You can compare with this kind of a village priest who are talking, saying the thing, if you don't pay this much of money, you will vomit blood. If you really talk anything about 
these kind of an Indian Kali Mata and everything, you will vomit blood. And this kind of quite similar spirits are talking from them, definitely not Holy Spirit. And uh, one has to be very careful in quoting that one. Remember, none of the anointed person claim that God will punish anybody who questioned them, including David, Saul or Moses. For Moses, only God came and spoke to Miriam. Let, not, let God come and talk to anybody else right now about a truly anointed person. God will certainly represent a truly anointed person, not themselves, trying to claim and threaten people. Brother, let me tell you one thing, okay? The threatening spirit will come only from the evil fellow, not from God at all. Because God said, God did not give us the spirit of timidity, but clear-mindedness. The courage is there given. Encouragement should be given to the people. Not these kind of scaring them by saying the thing, if you ask me a question, God will punish you, He will kill you by the accident, you will be smashed like the Idlis. All these things are absolutely a word coming from the evil one because the evil one comes to kill and destroy. So, if a, if a servant of God finds happiness in the death of any brother, any man, any human being, because he questioned them, trust me, there is no love in him. He should cry for that. You know, you have to take the right spirit in order to understand what is from the God. I will say, sir, brothers, please refer to the word of God, go there, and your eyes will be opened. And that's, that will be my answer. Yes, brother, I take that answer. But you just said the devil comes to destroy and steal. But we also read in the Bible that the devil is again an accuser also. So when you actually warn others saying that such beware of such servants of God, are you also acting as an accuser here? I'm just having that doubt here because when you spoke all these words, I just thought that you're also accusing servants of God. A very good question. Actually, many people ask such kind of a question to us also. There is a, there is a distinguish between a warning, a kind of a fellow brother and a wolf. Uh, you need to get the word. Many times, Jesus, Paul, everybody used the word wolves needs to be warned because if you leave the wolf, it will come and kill the sheep. So, I'm, there is a distinguish between my, my fellow brother who is a servant of God and the other one who has come to steal and also to destroy, even you can see the thing Christian ministers are abusing the girls and women without any kind of an, uh, heart in their heart. So do you want them to call me as a fellow brothers? Absolutely not. I have to give warning. If you see, Jesus also gave lots of warning uh, in all the Gospels that you will see them. He talks about Pharisees, he talks about the wolves and he talks about the last day warning about do not be deceived, you know, there are deceptions going to come. Paul even mentioned the names of the people like Demas, Alexander and all the people have to be warned because they are not a fellow brothers at all. So that people need to really get it onto it. Brother, you need to understand the thing. It's not an easy job to do a kind of a warning ministry and correcting uh, and try to save uh, the sheep from, the, from, the, from these kind of a wolf. And uh, it's easy to praise some minister and get good names, but it's extremely you will become unpopular when you do this kind of a corrective ministry. One kind of a satisfaction, one kind of a consolation that we have is that Jesus was also extremely unpopular those days. You're not looking out for popularity, but to save the sheep. And uh, you can read the Bible, it's corrective ministry, we are not accusing anybody, representing anybody. But we are trying to warn the people to be very careful with the so-called prophets and the, the wolves. Uh, that's my message. Uh, I hope you're quite happy with the answer, brother.